is there a sweet spot of time to look at for a deficit for maximal fat loss? Because I'm not convinced that it's happening over the course of a day. Mm -hmm. However, you know, maybe the body does know it's midnight because we do have <laughs> pretty strong, you know, circadian cues that would tell us it's midnight. But I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to think that the body doesn't say, hey, guys, it's midnight. Like, go ahead and reset everything back to zero. We're going to start over calories right now. Yeah, I don't think or at least I haven't seen a study that I re answers this question really well. But it definitely makes sense that, you know, calories are integrated over long periods, over long periods of time. Um, and, you know, different hormones regulate both short term and long term um, food intake. But like a week or two is a reasonable period of time over which calories should get integrated. And the that's that total balance over that period of time is what's really gonna, really, really gonna make a difference. So after today's video, I put a link down below for Fatty15. I've had that researcher on my channel. She's phenomenal. Fatty15 is the isolated form of the C15 saturated fat. So it makes the cell have structure so it doesn't become oxidized and ultimately lead to premature cellular death within the liver, which leads to, guess what? Inflammation and more fatty liver and visceral fat. Okay, so highly, highly important. I don't care if you get aged cheese or you use a supplement, but Fatty 15 is a really cool supplement. I put a link down below. That is a 15% off discount link when you use that link in that code down below. I also linked out to Dr. Van Watson's book, who's one of the pioneering researchers of C15 as this fat that we're deficient in uh, across the human race, really. So those links are down below. I would say that Again, if we step beyond, so, and then what that means is that in general, if your um, appetite systems are working properly, which I think they do become dysregulated in the modern food environment for all the reasons we've talked about already, inclu including sleep and the type of food and all this kind of stuff. But if you have, if your appetite regulation systems are working properly, and I, and I do think food, you know, changing your food quality can can improve that. Then, if you have a cheat meal or whatever it is, you have five thousand calories on a single day. You will just be less hungry the next day, and you will eat less. And then over time, those those calories balance out over that period of a, of a, of a week or so. Um, the one, and and we we do kind of see this in the, in the in the fat gain literature which is that when you look across a, a year, say, or, or a couple of years, and everybody says that, you know, on average, the average American is like in a 50 calorie surplus every day or something like that, right? Um, but that's not really what happens. What happens is that we, we overeat three or four days a year, and then we just never regulate back in order. And so, then, so we have these little spikes and then we go back to the same baseline of eating, but those spikes sort of add, sort of add up. And I think that's partly because if you're eating the standard American diet, your um, appetite systems aren't working as well as they could. So you so you don't eat less on the remaining days. You just go back to, to to your normal baseline, and those little those little blips add up. Beyond fat loss, that there are data um, mainly in female athletes that show that calories are integrated over a much shorter period of time. So if you have um, individual days where you're in a meaningful relative energy deficit, that can then affect menstrual cycle function. So it seems that menstruating women integrate calories in shorter periods of time in terms of fertility. I don't know whether the same thing happens in men because I don't think it's been studied in the same way. Um, but overall, I think calories are, are certainly integrated over several days. And there are, there are, there are studies in, like one of my favorite studies is in army rangers where they put them in this incredibly difficult environment and they're um, training for several hours a day and in a caloric deficit and in this very high stress environment. And you can see testosterone and other things change within a couple of weeks, 
but then you can also see things you know they in in one group they had refeeds and they re they they bounced back very quickly within a few days once you start adding calories into the system so i think um probably a week or two is where calories are really integrated but there are scenarios particularly in um in women who are at high risk of days of energy deficit so uh, either because they're not eating enough or because they have uh, large energy outputs because of exercise where you you those uh, calories are being integrated on a shorter time period yeah because i've always say it's like if i were to if you were to put a big you know chipotle burrito in front of me right now and i were to eat it i would in this moment be in a surplus yeah right so it's like how do you define that surplus at what point does a surplus become meaningful at what point does a deficit become meaningful because i've it's always helped my mind to take a week and look at sort of miniature bulks and cuts throughout the course of the week mm -hmm. where i'm like okay today i'm in a surplus okay tomorrow i'm in a deficit yeah. you know it's like and that's just kind of how i live my life but it yeah. also funny enough ends up just being a really seamless way for me to live my life because it's just pretty stress-free where i'm not like accountable to 2200 or 2600 calories yeah, or whatever yeah. you know it's just a matter of no you know what today i ate 4,000 calories and I'm not going to starve myself tomorrow, but tomorrow I'm going to listen to my body and I'll probably only consume like a thousand calories because I'm just not going to be that hungry. Yeah. And then the next day I might consume 3000. And what do you know, at the end of the week, I'm in like a slight deficit, you know, right where I, <laughs> at the end of the week, I'm in a slight deficit right where I want to be. Um, and I have two kind of follow-up questions on this. One is a little bit of a, I don't know, kind of an erroneous question that's just interesting that I think people would be curious to know. And I'm kind of curious to know how quickly do you store fat? Like if you were to, and I know a lot of this can depend on your resting metabolic rate mm -hmm. and things like that. Like I did a video recently on on cheat meals and how cheat meals, kind of like you mentioned, like we, we overeat a certain number of days out of the year and then don't really come back to that. Yeah. So people that do cheat meals but aren't really in an adequate deficit to really compensate mm -hmm. for that cheat meal, they'll be like, ah, I eat a regular life diet, but then on the weekends I enjoy myself. It's like, well, those 52 or, you know, uh, you know 52 Saturdays that you yeah. overeat, that adds up quite yeah, a bit yeah. and it has a serious deleterious effect. But if I were to say like, I wanna be fat tomorrow, like could I, Lots of reasons why probably body probably just like get rid of or probably get diarrhea or something. But if I try, <laughs> if I if I wanted to consume ten thousand calories and have a two or three pound surplus of uh, of calories, ultimately, would I be fat tomorrow? Like, how long does it take to actually gain fat? Probably highly individual, but generally mm -hmm. speaking. So uh, they, they've definitely done some some overfeeding studies where you overfeed people by you know, generally like one to two thousand calories. But there've there've been some studies that have done more. Um, and and then you'll look maybe after two weeks or four weeks, and in that time period, if you're eating a surplus of a say a thousand calories a day, you can gain a you know a significant amount of of body fat, like se several pounds. But if you just overate today, it's going to be very difficult for that amount of right. So so if if, if you think about you're going to gain several pounds over a couple of weeks eating uh, a thousand calorie surplus a day. That's a fourteen thousand calorie surplus. Um, you could try and eat fourteen thousand plus whatever your base base uh, calorie requirement. Where right? you want to eat seventeen thousand calories? So, I mean, you could try, and I you would you would probably gain several pounds of fat by tomorrow, right? It's, but um, as you said, you're probably not going to absorb like. We, we kind of think that humans absorb all of it, but actually we don't necessarily absorb all the calories um, uh, th that we eat. It's it's really going to determine, it's really going to be based on how the food's prepared, um, uh, the the state of it. But, but also if you start to generate significant GI distress, you may eliminate some of those calories um, uh, straight out the other end. Um, so I think if you worked really hard, <laughs> To eat a lot of calories, yes, you could gain a few pounds by tomorrow, but <laughs> but uh, a fat by tomorrow, but but, that's, but it's going to be hard. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah.